the process that we're going to use for the cylindrical coordinates is parallel to the processes we've used for the other two. All right, so we're going to start by establishing our inertial coordinate system. In this case, our inertial coordinate system is going to have an r, a theta, and possibly a z. So r goes from our origin out to our point of interest. That's its direction. Theta direction is in the direction of that changing theta, which is usually information that's given to us in the problem. That's how we know to use the cylindrical coordinate system. And z would be coming out of the slide at us in this diagram. We draw our free body diagram, break up all our forces so that they're either in the r, the theta, or the z direction. We identify the direction of our expected accelerations, or we take a guess if we don't know, and we apply our Newton's second law. So our Newton's second law for this situation, same form as before, sum of forces equals mass times acceleration in that direction. We're using our kinematic definitions for a, r, a, theta, and a, z. So once again, remember, if we, we can find these three things, so long as we know r, r, r dot, r double dot, theta dot, theta double dot, and in this case, z double dot. And then we use any kinematics to write additional equations, which we might need to relate things to position or time or velocities. So let's take a look at how this works. We've got an amusement park ride. You see a lot of amusement park rides when we're talking about polar equations. So we've got an amusement park ride. This guy is sitting in this cart, and it's supported by small wheels. Initially, the cart is traveling in this circular path, and r is 16 feet. And we're given the expression for its speed. All right, and so then r starts to change, right? So this rope, this cable in here, starts getting pulled in. So he's spinning and getting closer and closer to the center, basically. And we need to figure out what the tension in that rope is at the point where r has now changed to 4 feet. So it starts at 16 feet. When it gets to 4 feet, what's the tension in the rope? And we're told that the cart and the passengers have a total weight of 400 pounds and we can ne neglect friction. So those wheels that it's supported on are frictionless wheels. So let's see how we would go about setting this up. We need a coordinate system. So in our case, we've got, here's our origin, here's our R. So R is going to be pointing outwards and theta, so that's R hat, and theta is gonna be pointing in the direction that theta is changing, so that is theta hat. And if this was in 3D, we'd have a, vo a vector coming straight out of the board at us, but we don't need to worry about this, the Z direction. So nothing's happening in the Z direction. Okay, so we've got R and theta directions. Let's draw our free body diagram. We have this guy in the cart, and really all that's happening is we have a tension acting towards the center. And no other forces are acting on this because the gravity is acting out of plane, right? It's going into the board. Okay, so sum of forces in the R direction is going to equal negative tension, right? It's acting t inwards and R always points out, is equal to mass times AR. And the sum of forces in the theta direction is equal to none, zero, is equal to mass times acceleration in the theta direction. Now think back and remember what the expressions for a r and a theta were, and we get this is mass times r double dot minus r theta dot squared, and mass times r theta double dot plus 2r dot theta dot. Okay, now we need to use this hint that's in the orange box here. This hint is coming from differential equations, which I'm guessing none of you have had. But basically, you see this, this is equal to zero, right? So the mass goes away, so that means the stuff in the brackets here has to equal zero. It tells us that if that is the case, then we have an expression that then this simplifies into this first derivative with respect to time of r squared theta dot also being equal to zero. So this line 
means that we can say that r squared theta dot is equal to a constant. And that's coming from the hint from differential equations, but we're going to use that in a second. All right, so to find this um, ar and r squared theta dot and everything else, we need to know what all of these various r's are, okay? So let's start with what we know. We have an initial case conditions, right? So initial conditions, r at 0 is equal to 16, and r uh, and theta at 0, oops, theta at 0 is equal to 0 0.2. So those are our initial conditions. We're also told that r dot is negative 0.5, and it's a constant, so our double dot is equal to zero. And we know our mass, we'll write that here. Our mass is given as a weight, so our mass is 400 divided by 32.2. Okay, so if we know our dot, we need to find r. So how do we get to r from r dot? We integrate. Um, so we're going to say if r dot is equal to dr dt, then dr integral is going to equal the integral of r dot dt is, this is going to be from 0 and it from the initial, which is 16, to the point we're interested in, which is r, this is going to be from the initial, which is t equal to 0, to the time we're interested in, which is t. So this is going to be r minus 16 is equal to r dot, which was point, negative 0 0.5, so negative 0 0.05 times t. All right. So our expression for r then is r is equal to negative 0.5t plus 16. So at what point were we interested in? 4, right? At four, r equal to 4, t equals 24. So it took 24 seconds for this guy, for the r to go from 16 to 4. So we have the r information now. Now we need the theta information. Well, here we have the fact that theta dot is equal to some constant over r squared. Can we figure out what that constant is? Well, this is always going to be true, so it's also true at the initial condition, right? At the initial condition, theta dot is equal to 0.2, um, and we have r is equal to 16, so we can solve for the constant, right? So 0.2, let's go back up to this form of it, right? r was 16 squared times 0.2 is equal to the constant. So the constant is equal to 51.2. So we then have this expression for theta dot, which is 51 point two divided by r squared. So at this point where r is four, so theta dot at this time of twenty four seconds, which we found down here where r is four, is going to equal three point two, which is fifty one point two divided by four squared. So we now have r dot, r double dot, r, theta dot, and we don't need theta double dot. So it doesn't matter what it is, right? Because we're going back up to this equation. We have r double dot, r, and theta dot, all at this point where r is 4. So I'm going to call this equation 1. We'll come down here and finish working with equation 1. The, ten the negative tension is going to equal the mass, 400 divided by 32.2, times r double dot, 0, minus r, 4, times theta dot squared, 
theta dot is 3.2 squared. So the tension is equal to, so the negative signs will become positives, right? And the tension will be equal to 509 pounds. And that then is our answer. So methods again, we drew our coordinate system, we drew our free body diagram, we wrote our equations of motion, we used information that we knew about the kinematics to find all of the variables we needed in order to fill in the equations of motion. We solved the equation of motion for our unknown. In this case, we used this hint, which had to be given to you. There's no way that I would expect you to know this because you haven't taken differential equations.